Hello, Floss Two. It is Nicole. This is Floss Tube number 34, if you can even believe that. It is uh, Super Bowl Sunday, February 12th, 2023. I I'm not even representing anything. I don't own anything, e Chiefs, even though I live in Kansas. So we kind of are, su I say, supposed to root for the Chiefs. Uh, but welcome in. I know this is going to be up a little bit late today. Um, I've had a lot going on. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. So briefly, I'm going to preface this with, I am sorry. I meant to do this first thing this morning and have it up first thing. And I had a plumbing issue and I'm having to pay after hours plumbing, weekend plumbing hours to have my garbage disposal replaced. That's it. So, um, oh, you know what else is awesome? Frosting on my face. I made sugar cookies this morning. So there's that. Um, I do have people coming over. It's part of the reason that I need to go ahead and have that replaced today. Um, but that's okay. It's all good. But I just wanted to explain there's that. Um, the other thing, I said I'd have some quilting today. I do not. Uh, I had the best intentions. All my finishing took way longer than I thought. Plus, I had a couple of work things happen. You guys know. It's just, it is what it is. So, I hope you understand. I haven't even touched my sewing machine. So, um, I'm going to do my very best to share that next week. But I do have some awesome finishes for you today. I... I uh, want to go over just a couple of little things. I do have, I think, a couple of questions, not a whole lot. I have FFOs, finishes, whips, sals, um, upcoming sals. Our our sal starts tomorrow. I'm so excited. Um, a little tiny bit of haul, some goodies that Fat Quarter Shop sent me. Then we'll do some giveaways. So I do want to talk about a couple of things. First thing timestamps are below. So if you want are interested in seeing the finishes or you want to go back and revisit finishes, you can always check that out uh, easily by clicking the little timestamps in the description. I do try to provide links for everything I share if I have a link. Um, sometimes I forget. If I forget, you just let me know. Uh, definitely reach out, but always check in the description. I also have my Amazon shop down in like the links and mentions, I think is what I call it. But if you're ever looking for things that I'm showing that I say are in my Amazon shop, you can always click that and find it easily. I had a couple of comments last week saying that you noticed more ads in my video than normal. I haven't changed any settings. Uh, it kind of just is what it is. I have no idea why sometimes there's more ads than other times. Um, my channel is monetized. I've talked about that before. I do have a monetized channel. This is my work channel as well as my floss tube channel. And uh, so I don't know what to tell you. Uh, so it just kind of, as I said, it is what it is. I don't know. Um, let's see. Facebook group. I do want to want to reiterate if you are asking to join the Facebook group, myself and I have two moderators now. Um, we are we approve anyone who wants to be in the private group. There's a couple of questions you need to answer. They're pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you don't answer them or you put something strange, uh, we're going to decline you. Um, or if you answer the questions but don't agree to the group rules, it'll get kicked back with, hey, you didn't do this. So try again, because I know uh, sometimes one of us will, will see that and we will put, you know, hey, you didn't, you didn't check that box, um, making sure that you have read the rules. And please read the rules because um, a lot of times we notice we approve someone and then they pop right into the group and uh, do something that I've asked you not to do right away. Uh, and one of the big ones is please don't do any external links. I know it's a pain. Sometimes the links are totally okay, but the reason I have it that way is I don't want to have to look at all the links and see, is this one okay? Is this one not? Is this one okay? So I've just made it across the board. Please don't post links. Links will only come from myself or moderators. Um, let's see. More spam in the comments. I knew that I, I, I made myself a little 
a little cheat sheet. There were there was a guy looking for dates. <laughs> That's what I call it. I don't know if that's the case or not. They're all bots or spamming of some sort. I did report and block, always report and block. Do not respond. I know, and I have seen all of LaFloss tubers, basically any channel I think that hosts a giveaway. <laughs> I think that's what triggers it. That's what I think. I have no idea for sure. Don't respond to anyone who is responding to you. If it looks like it's from me and I say, hey, you want a prize, message me on Telegram, not me. The only way that I ever announce that someone has won a giveaway is at the end of my videos, I say, so-and-so won this, so-and-so won that, message me, or not message me, email me, and I'll get you your prize. I am never gonna go after you in the comments, even if it looks like it's from me, even if it's my profile pic, even if it looks like my name, it's usually a little off. Um, people make fake accounts and try to lure, your, lure you in. Do not give them your information. I cannot stress that enough. I see everybody talking about it. It's unfortunate that it's come to the point where I have to talk about it in every video, but I know we have a lot of new viewers, by the way, Hello and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And I've heard from a bunch of you who have just found the channel. I am so grateful. Thank you to everyone. Um, but I want you to hear it so that hopefully you are aware and you don't fall for it. It would, uh, you know, I just don't want anyone to, to <laughs> fall victim to these scammers. Um, new viewers, welcome previous viewers, welcome back. Thank you guys. Still trying to get to 100,000. We are getting closer. I am going to do a huge party. I've actually ironed out a bunch of uh, details about what prizes will be when we get there. I know we're a little ways away, but I like to plan in advance for the big party. <laughs> um, so I've done uh, some of that. There will, will be two separate streams, one for card making and one for floss tube and giveaways for each. Um, because uh, the channel has grown because of both of you. Um, my one-year floss anniversary will be in July, and I hadn't thought much about it, but Jessica, the Sweetwater Stitcher, she is coming up on her one-year anniversary, floss anniversary, and she was talking about it in her recent video, and I thought, oh, that is such a good idea to celebrate that. I'm so bad about remembering. So I actually, I had seen it, I can't remember. Oh, I looked back for my first video and um, I was looking for something. And that's what made me think of it after I saw her video. So um, I'm going to work on some ideas for that. We might do a fun sal start that at that time or something. I will think of something. So um, that'll be something fun to look forward to as well. Let's go ahead and jump in to the video. I do want to mention... Um, never mind. We'll get to that in just a minute. So Q and A. Lindsay said, "Do you sew in hand with those larger count fabrics? Did it take you long to adjust from a lower to higher stitch count?" Um, so she means like a thirty-six. I'm sure a thirty-two, thirty-six. I haven't stitched on forty yet. I did buy some forty fabric. Um, it's not here yet, so we'll see. But I stitch in hand with everything right now. I know um, a lot of people don't, but I do. I do use a Halo Go magnifying light. You can find it in my Amazon shop if you're curious. I'll also show it in tomorrow night's uh, Stitch With Me live stream because I often show that like in the video just to kind of show you how I stitch. Um, but no, I just stitch in hand. Yes, it took me a while to build up to that. When I came back to stitching... Gosh, it's probably been about two years ago now that I actually came back. I've only been sharing with you guys like the last like eight months <laughs> that I was stitching. But when I came back to stitching, I came back stitching 14 count. That that was comfortable for me. Uh, a lot of the stitch alongs I joined were doing 14 count because I was doing a lot with Fat Quarter Shop. And that's a lot of times what they offer. Um, and so I and I love it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I do love the smaller stitch count. I do love how the finished piece looks for me personally. And so what I started was I think the first size I did different than a 14 count was a 25 count Lugana. And that's going to be a pretty big size. 
anyway, but I have stitched over two threads before. Um, I used, I stitched on linen like 20 some years ago. So it, I did have a little knowledge to that, but it took a little bit to adjust. I'm not even going to lie. That took a little bit. It was the shine on sampler, which I'm still working on. Uh, it took a little bit to adjust, but now I find 25 very easy to stitch on. Then I did some 28 and 32 and I thought, you know what? I'm happy here. I, I'm not going up to a, to a 36. I'm not going to do linen. I just did Lugana, but I have branched out and I find I love it. So give yourself some grace and time to work into those fabrics. Try a few different things. Some I like more than others. Also certain brands or certain, you know, they're all different. If you like stitching on a, a more firm fabric, some of them you may not like so much. So try them out. I, I, de I definitely think you should try, but also it should be enjoyable. So stitch on what you like. Uh, Chris and Leslie both wanted to know what LNS stands for, which I have mentioned a lot of times in videos. That is local needlework shop. <laughs> um, so I know there's some funny little abbreviations in the floss tube world but that is what that is okay shall we do ffos i think we shall um i will share let's see the first two that i finished i have more ffos to do when i dove into my ffos i just didn't have enough time to do them all this week i didn't realize how many finishes i have that i have not ffo'd i'm kind of not mad at myself because I didn't really feel like finishing. I felt like stitching. And I always think you should just go with what you feel like. But once I started finishing, I could have kept going, but then I wouldn't have had a video for you this week. So we'll save those for the next time or the time after, whenever I get to it. So the first thing I finished are these Primrose Cottage little Valentine stitches that I did on 32 count powder pink splash Lugana. Uh, I did use the called for DMC threads. I made little pillows. This is some doodle bug fabric I've had forever. It's a treasure. I did back the front of the stitch and the back of the stitch with some lightweight fusible interfacing, um, turned them right side out. And then I did a blind stitch along the bottom. I don't think I did too bad of a job. There's a little puckering. But, you know, I filled them with a combination of polyester fiber fill and uh, the poly pellets, which I shared in another video. So they have a little bit more of a weighted feel to them. You could also use um, crushed walnut shells or lizard litter or things like that. I use that, uh, the poly pellets and the fiber fill for mine. They're real tiny. They're super cute. And then I put made a little pink bow using that little bow tutorial that I've shared before in the ornament finishing, and I put a decorative pin in the top. That's it. Very, very simple, perfect for Valentine's as we're almost there. I do wanna share where I got these pins. These are the Cherry Chick off Etsy. And you can see I took some from this one, but aren't they pretty? She has a whole bunch. I, I bought some others, but I didn't bring them in here, um, or I don't have them out, they're in here in a drawer but I love them I think they're really cute decorative finish and I just wanted to finish it um, a little different but those are my primrose cottage February 14th and sweetheart love these little pillows I love these little postage stamps that Lindsay designs I think they're very very cute and fun so here's one and two <laughs> for the fully finished Let's go ahead and do my other Valentine's finish, fully finish, and then I will show a couple of others. So I made this little beaded garland. This is that free little um, stitch from Salt and Pepper Stitching. You can get it in our Facebook group. But I just made, and this one is filled with crushed walnut shells. I made a little heart shape, I made a little tassel down here and then I made a string of these awesome Valentine's beads. Got these off Amazon. Backed it with some Bonnie and Camille fabric and did a little bow here at the top. I'm imagining sticking it kind of like in a bowl with some other stuff around it. I thought it was a super kind of fun finish. It was a little bit different. I will say it took me a little bit of time. 
Okay, sorry for tiny little interruption. My plumber actually came back with the garbage disposal. Okay, so I was showing you the garland I made with that freebie from Salt and Pepper Stitching. I just, I liked the little heart shape she showed of her finish. And so I thought it would be fun to do that. Mine was stitched on 36 count Duxbury linen, so it is um, tiny. But I thought it was perfect. This will be cute like in a bowl filler or, you know, just kind of used whatever to decorate something else. Just use some of those fun wood beads. They come in all kinds. I put a bunch in my shop um, on Amazon because I love them. I love them for everything. So something a little bit different. And that is finish number three. While he was here, I fixed a couple things on my printout while I was waiting for him. So, uh, let's see. This is probably my favorite finish. It's finish number four. I'm going to show you my biggest one at the end because it's Hive Rules, which I love as well. But um, I loved how this turned out. This is Salt and Pepper Stitching Winter. I stitched this in January. Uh, my little friend stitching group, we kind of all enabled each other to stitch it and I finished mine into a little pillow. And I had intended to do like a little skinny vertical pillow, but I got inspired. Um, and I decided to try, I've not really done uh, the little Rick Rack trim before. And so I decided to go ahead and do that. And what I did was I sewed the piece of Rick Rack trim onto my linen. I actually didn't cut anything down. It was kind of jank looking, um, but I really followed Primrose Cottage has some different tutorials and things that they've done. And so I kind of just, I think it was like an Instagram live maybe that Lindsay had here not too long ago. I sewed on my Rick Rack trim I sewed on a little piece of the plaid fabric. This is old fabric from my stash. It's Sweetwater fabric from a hometown collection, maybe hometown two, actually. Had it forever, but it matched perfectly. I've had this fabric pulled out since I finished stitching this. It's just been sitting, sitting in a pile, waiting for Nicole to finish. Um, sewed that on, trimmed this down to six and three quarters was the finished size of my stitch piece. This was stitched on 36 count Duxbury linen which was kind of my favorite there. I still love it. I still stitch a lot on it. That and milk and honey. Um, but that's what this was stitched on. I did um, back, I just backed this piece actually before I stitched anything together with some lightweight interfacing. I didn't uh, back any of the rest of it with interfacing. Sewed it together, blind stitched it down here along the bottom. Did as I stuffed it with polyester fiber fill and poly pellets like I did my little mini pillows and then I wrapped some twine around this is inspired by Kathy of hands-on design I've seen her do that with a few pillow finishes and I think it's cute so I did that that's some lawn fawn lawn trimmings twine from my card making friends and then I did make a little covered button I took this little snowflake motif here I stitched it again on some of that fabric I cut off the bottom from from my stitched piece did a little three quarters inch finished button and then added some just another button company pins to finish it off and I love it I'm kind of sad that I didn't get these done to put out for winter I mean we are blowing right through Valentine's and heading into spring I don't even know how that happened, you guys, but I have an awesome little pillow bowl filler decoration for next January, and I am pumped because I have not really had a lot of winter themed stuff, but by the time next January rolls around and we put all of our Christmas away, I have a lot of little things I've either finished or am finishing or will need to finish stitching. I'm excited. I love it. I could not love how this turned out more. Anyway, very excited. The color of trim. So I did kind of fall down the rabbit hole of the Lori Holt trims and I got quite a few of these. This is the color cottage. And I just looked to see what I thought matched the best and this one matched and I absolutely love it. A little tricky, but I've been practicing stitching on my Rick Rack trim and I think I'm getting better at it. So Love it, love it, love it. Oh, and I did stitch. So after I did the button, so I didn't have this shifting around. I actually just took a needle and thread and sewed my button right there to the center of my twine to kind of help keep it where it's supposed to go. Anyway, 
and loved it. Okay, I've shared all of that stuff. Let's put all of that. The fifth FFO. This is a lot of FFOs for me, you guys, and it's huge, so I hope I can get it all in. I finished high rules, and it's ginormous. I don't even know. Maybe if I go all the way back. This paddle, I think I mentioned a while ago. I don't know that I ever shared it. I got this on Super Clearance last year at Hobby Lobby in the spring shop. And you guys, it's heavy, 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 heavy. Um, it's a beautiful piece, but I bought it for Hive Rules because this is a stitched on 25 count antique white Lugana. It's big. The stitch is big. It was going to be kind of tricky to find something. Uh, but I love it. So what I did, the stitch is not quite as big as the board. And I know a lot of it is covered up up here. Maybe I can kind of show right here. So there's a little bit of Lori Holt gingham fabric right here. And then some of her nutmeg, here's that trim again. And this is her large size. I should have mentioned that with my pillow. That was her large trim there as well. Uh, she has small and large in a lot of the, I think most of the colors, I'm, but don't quote me on that. Anyway, I sewed the nutmeg, tr nutmeg trim to my stitch. Then I sewed on her little gingham fabric. To balance it, I also did that down at the bottom. You can see it a lot better here. And then, of course, um, I had shared in my button tutorial that I had earlier this week on my channel. I did this little bumblebee and I did that twine around the bottom and added the bumblebee just for a fun little touch at the bottom of the stitch or of the finished piece. And I, I like how it turned out. I thought it was really cute. And again, I did just sew him in place. I just took a little needle and thread and stitched him down. But I didn't mount this on another piece of fabric. I didn't feel like it needed it. I felt like it got lost. I had it laid out. If you guys had seen how many different ways I laid this out, it was a lot. Okay, up here at the top, this is some like burlap, burlap ribbon. I made into a little bow and secured. Um, I put, I cut apart. I think this was from either Joann's or Michael's from last fall. I, it was a, a pick with all of this, these pieces, I cut it apart with wire scissors or uh, wire cutters, heavy duty wire cutters. Don't put your finger in there. Uh, that's what <laughs> a long time ago, this is completely off topic. Um, but we had, um, a kid live with us when he was in high school a little bit. He had a, a family situation at home and he, he was kind of, um, what I consider my third son, <laughs> uh, but he lived with us for a while when my kids were little and they, I mean, they still love him and stuff, but he actually went to school, became an electrician and he got me the wire snips and he always said, don't put your finger in there cause it'll cut your finger. <laughs> so that that always makes me think of Jared anyway. So I tucked in, uh, just some of the little pieces from this. I wanted it to be kind of random and I kind of like, I didn't want it to be overpowering. This was the last thing I added. It felt blah and it needed something. And so I went down to my, my little buckets that I have sorted by seasonal things that I could use for finishing and grabbed it. My favorite thing is this adorable little felt wool felt ball bumblebee. This is just another button company. I did assemble the bumblebee. I didn't do it exactly like the instructions, mostly. Mostly I did. Um, you can buy the, the wool felt balls from them. You can buy the little kit that has the, the pins that are the antennae. I think you can see those. And then of course the pins that are the wings. You do have to cut the black wool felt ball in half and stitch it to the yellow one. It was so easy. I mean, literally so easy. They recommend doing black rickrack for the bumblebee and they only did one. I actually didn't have any black rickrack, but I had the chart, I think it's called charcoal, lady.creates uh, chenille trim. So I actually did two layers of the chenille trim around the bumblebee and I stitched it onto the wool felt, worked like a dream and I love it. And then I did die cut uh, from some Poshta design dies, any kind of flower and leaves would work, but I die cut a little white 
felt flower, green felt leaves, and added that little button to the center. But Hive Rules is ready, and I gotta tell you that I'm ready to start stitching all the bees again. Enough time has come around that my, I have a whole bag still with my bee charts that I haven't stitched. I want to dive right back in and I, I want to stitch them up. Uh, I'm ex super excited. Have you seen Lindsay's or Primrose Cottage's sneak peek for her new chart for coming out at market? That has bees. I love it. Um, I want to stitch the ABCs chart. It's still in my bag and I think I have one or two more smalls from that collection still to do but i i'm glad that i kept it all kitted like all of the flosses and things because i'm just gonna dive right back in anyway i'm very happy with it it's it is a heavy piece so but i love it i love it love it love it um very happy with how it turned out and i'm glad that i when i I've had this thinking I would use it for a while and I'm glad I went ahead and did it because I just think it turned out cute and covered buttons. I had thought maybe I'd do the covered button, but it just didn't feel substantial enough up there. So I did go ahead and add the B, but then I did have to add that little guy down there because cute, cute. I don't have the style number for this. I apologize. I must have thrown it away when I got it. Sorry. If I see them again, in my store, I will take a picture so I can share with you guys, but I did get this at Hobby Lobby. It was Spring Shop. You know, a lot of times if you wait long enough, they'll put it on super clearance and you can get one because I know that this one was an expensive piece because it's not one of those light, light things. It's very heavy. And that's my FFOs. I do have finishes too. You guys, I was a stitching, finishing fool. So the first step... First, first, I finished Big Hearted Tiny Town. I hope I have a fully finished by next week. It may take a minute. I've been I, I've been looking at the tutorial that I want to follow. I think I'm going to follow Kathy at Hands On Designs finishing tutorial for a drum. But look at that. This is the 32 count powder pink splash Lugana. All the called for threads absolutely adorable. I couldn't love it more. Two over two. Let me see if I have anything else I wanted to say. This was a, a Sal, pardon me, excuse me, I have the hiccups. This was a Sal hosted by Jessica the Sweetwater Stitcher and Mrs. Jones Stitches. And I'm pretty pumped that I finished it. Oh, and I did add the little buttons on. I, the little buttons are so cute. So that should be an FFO soon. Don't fold it in half. I ironed it. Let's leave it. Let's leave it nice. Okay. The other finish I had this week, and this stitched up so fast. So uh, Silver Creek Samplers has a new Facebook page. She shared a freebie, do everything in love. I know it's a free chart, but I don't share it on my channel. Um, I used, yep, I used some colors. Strawberry Parfait, Little Pink Peony, and Ribbon Red. That's what I used on mine. Uh, I did two over two on 28 count Mushroom Lugana. And here is my finished piece. I want to FFO it. It's beautiful. I love this. I loved every minute of this stitch. Also, 28 count mushroom Lugana. Mm, I love it. And I did I really leave it on a huge piece? I sure did. Who am I? I usually cut it down, but I didn't. I love, love, love this fabric. It is a gorgeous color. Anyway, looking forward to FFOing that one too beautiful check out join her facebook group stitch that up stitch it in any color combination you would like it's so good okay the other thing i want to share before we move on to sal's is i did have a video this week so i'm going to put this kind of in my finishing even though it's because these are little teeny tiny finishes um 
but you saw the bumblebee covered button. I did a covered button tutorial. I, there's lots of them out there. It's not groundbreaking news, but if you want to watch it, please do. They're very fun. They're very addictive. I want to make all the covered buttons. So I'm going to show you my least favorite first. And he's only my least favorite. He's going to get redone because I thought I picked two different colors of brown and I did, but I don't think that they show up, that they're too different. This is a little Rudolph from a Primrose Cottage chart. Definitely would be cute for a Christmas finish. Um, and I did link my button cover tutorial down in the description. Okay. I stitched these up from a couple of different heart and hand charts. Look at how fun these heart buttons are. I mean, cute. These are stitched on 36. In fact, everything here is stitched on 36. The bumblebee was on 25 count Lugana, antique white Lugana to match my stitch. I just wanted to make some buttons and I wanted them to be small so they fit. So I did use a small count, but darling, aren't they fun? I just want to make all the buttons now to be completely transparent. In fact, I mean, I loved it so much that I stitched this one up in just a few minutes to perfectly match this. Most of the time I would say that's probably how I would do it is I would finish the piece and if I need a button to finish it off, I'll stitch a button. And then finally, this was taken from a Shannon Christine chart. If you are part of Shannon's um, Facebook group, she has a group, it's like Patreon, but it's not Patreon, it's a private group, a paid for group subscription group. Um, she gives out lots of great freebies every month. Uh, there's a amazing stitch along going on right now. It's a beautiful, huge chart. She has a couple of freebies like every month, all kinds of good stuff, but she has like a St. Patty's chart and there's a, a little rainbow in it and I altered it so it would work on a button, but I made this little rainbow button and I think I want need to make them for all my crafty friends, uh, because it's so cute. I absolutely loved it. It turned out darling. Anyway, so if you are interested in covered buttons, look at your charts. See what you can pull out from them, little motifs and things, and make some cute little covered buttons. Okay. Sal's. I did not bring in this hand, my hands-on design season to a year of celebration because I didn't stitch on it this week. However... I forgot to write down your name, but a lovely viewer um, messaged me on Instagram and said, I think you have a mistake in your border around December. And she was right. Thank you. And I think she was worried about messaging me that I would be offended. You guys, if you see a glaring error like that, please message me because I would rather fix it now. We all are going to have those mistakes. Um, I can't, and it's, it is now that, now that she pointed it out, I can't unsee it. So I need to fix that. I'm hoping I can fix it this evening and then get started on January or February. Uh, but yeah, so never be afraid to message me that or anyone. Um, if you see something, I think as stitchers, we all, we would all rather know before we go ahead and finish it. Um, okay. So I worked on the Fat Quarter Shop Love Potion Sal. I think that's the, this is going to be the only other thing I've worked on. And week two came out. So here's what we are, what we have so far. And I'm going to show you what I've stitched. I'm not quite caught up. Um, I am working into week two, but I still had a little of week one to do. But here's where I'm at. I am stitching this on 36 count milk and honey. You can see it's going to be pretty tiny. I'm here for it. I love it. Look at the color. I know I mentioned this last week, but it's good. I started my border, which I do kind of help think it helps tie it all together. I'm a border girl. I know borders are controversial. Some people like them and some don't, and that's fine either way. Uh, I personally love them. So I started stitching mine up, but it's super cute. I love the colors on this fabric. Um, I think the called for fabric was a 14 count or 25 count, one of those, uh, but use whatever you want. And I, and it was the called for is white. You can see I'm doing something that's a little bit more of a vintage flair to it. And the colors are beautiful on it. I absolutely love how it looks. 
really eager to get back to that. I am using, I'm doing one strand over two because it's 36 count using the called four classic color works and it's beautiful. So absolutely amazing. Loving it. Okay. Let me see. I forgot to tell you, I know that it's pretty far into this. I will put the hashtags for anything that has a hashtag up on the screen. That was the Be Mine Sal. So that will be on the screen. I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to be better. And I'm trying to mention it. I have it in my notes, but if I don't reference my notes, I'm not going to remember. Reference your notes. Okay. So we have done that page. You guys, I completely forgot something. One moment. I promise I was more prepared than this. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, my other Sal whip is the hands-on design Mad for Plaid. I finally got a start on this. Is it one little strawberry? Sure is, but I am going to work on this during the Super Bowl, so it's all good. Um, this hashtag is 141 Mad for Plaid Sal. This is with Chantal of 141 Design. This is, of course, uh, the adorable seasonal stitch. You get you stitched these four charts come in the um, uh, chart, or these four patterns come in the chart. Pardon me. Um, I am using the called for Cosmo Floss, and I have to say, I forgot I love it. I've I'm using Cosmo Floss on Shine On. I love it. I like Cosmo Floss. I like it a lot. I am stitching on 32 count charcoal gray Lugana using the called for threads. There is a DMC conversion. So if you are looking at this and you're thinking, I don't want to mess with trying to find the Cosmo thread because it can be tricky. There is a DMC conversion. It's beautiful. I have seen some of you stitching this on lighter fabrics and I had a little bit of I don't know, buyer's remorse. Like I was like, oh, do I want to, to stitch on something lighter? I have someone in my Facebook group stitching on a light pink. No, no, that's for the next thing. Never mind. Chantal is stitching that on a light fabric. I've seen several people stitching that on a light fabric. Um, and it looks beautiful. Um, but I think I'm gonna like the gray. I tried to, so I'm not doing black like Kathy's examples and I didn't do a basic, you know, kind of brownish color. Um, I like the charcoal gray. I think it's gonna be pretty. I don't know how I'm gonna finish it yet. I don't think I'm gonna do the backer board. I got the backer board for something else. That was a finish that I wanted to share today, but didn't happen, so we'll share it later. Um, but I, I, I think I'm gonna love it. The colors pop on that color of fabric. Very happy with it. Okay, next up, upcoming sales. So um, let's go ahead and talk about the Bountiful sale first. And then I will talk about my sale. So I will keep mentioning the Bountiful Sal, I mean, up to and while we're doing the stitch along, because this is Fat Quarter Shop's free stitch along and quilt along that they do for Make-A-Wish every year, and they have reached their first milestone. So they have reached their milestone. Let me get all the information. Well, maybe it's on here. Uh, yes, they reached their $20,000 uh, first level. So they kind of have different levels and then they release different things. So they released the uh, fabric requirements for the quilting, the cross stitch supply list, and all of that good stuff. I know I've been kind of sharing what I'm doing. I can kind of share the whole sheet now. This is the Bountiful Stitch Along. I am going to stitch mine slightly different than this. You can download this at Quarter Shop. I have a link down below. Stitch in any color you want. That is what I want you to take away from this is if you don't want to, you can stitch it just like them and it's beautiful. You can stitch it in 
any colors that you want to stitch. I am switching my colors. Um, those are down below, as well as I've done a couple of posts and things for this. I'm going to stitch mine on 36 count milk and honey, which I know I've shown. I really like it. To me, it's just a great basic, so it's going to be small. And I am, instead of doing the brightest, brighter colors, I'm going to do a more muted palette. And you can do that. Do a floss toss on your fabric and see what you like. Or maybe you just want to stitch a couple of little things. Maybe you want to, um, I don't know, make something with little butterflies or do the flowers. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm taking out this and this. And I'm going to repeat this here, probably turning it. Uh, I haven't decided exactly yet, but I think more, it's going to look to me, this looks like a quilt because they, they are doing a quilt too. I am going to just take out these two and I am repeating these two. And you'll see that as I do the stitch along. So um, that is happening. And I thank you to everyone who has donated. I know I mentioned this. Uh, I... It's a great thing. I love that Fat Quarter Shop does fundraising for lots of different things. Um, and I think it's amazing as a, a company that they do that. And so that is the first thing. I dropped something. Hold on. I had to get cleared out on the floor <laughs> to get it. <laughs> okay, so that is the Bountiful. And it, that is... Hashtag Bountiful Sal. If you're stitching along, I would love to see what you're doing. Definitely let me know. Okay, my Sal, starting tomorrow. We are doing an Easter-ish slash spring Sal. I, as a community, my Facebook group, I did a poll. I put two choices on there and we are doing the More Chocolate Bunnies from Hands On Design. And it is, I'm, I'm super excited. I have seen this stitched in person. My LNS has an example of this in their shop. Uh, all done up, all finished, all FFO'd. It's on a board. It's so cute. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I know some of you have started stitching. I love seeing everybody's progress. I am going to stitch and just ignore that that little corner gone. I am stitching on Weeks Dye Works Aspen 32 count linen. I did a little tester because I wanted to see if I, and I, I love it. I, I really do love it. This is beautiful to stitch on. I'm using the called for Sulky. There is also a DMC conversion. I do wanna talk about the floss real quick. Don't be intimidated by the Sulky. You don't have to use it. Um, if you feel more comfortable with DMC, use DMC. If you want to try the Sulky, try the Sulky. I'm trying the Sulky, you guys. I'm trying it right along with you. I am not an expert by any means, but I like to try new things. Um, if it's a win, it's a win. If it's not, it's not. However, I did test her. It's going to be a win for me. <laughs> um, I do want to mention, and I have, I'll have this in the description, Kathy wanted everyone to know that the Hop On In chart uses the same Sulky Floss. So if you pick up the Sulky Colors, if you buy either the Floss Pack or you buy them individually, this uses the same colors, I think minus two from, from the other chart. So you're kind of, you can use them more. I'm going to stitch this on the 32 count charcoal gray Lugana that I'm stitching Mad for Plaid on. I'm going to stitch this as well because it's too cute. I just wanted to, to mention that and throw that out there. So I said I did a tester. Sulky thread is a little thicker than your DMC. Um, it's a cotton thread. It comes on these cute spools like this. And if you are stitching on a 32 count or higher um, I will have to, I'll have to ask some of y'all who are stitching on 14 or 28, but I know that from what I've read, 32 and higher, you use one strand because it's going to be thicker than DMC. Does that make sense? Like, I think it, what they say, it's like one and a half of a DMC strand. Does that make sense? I hope. 
but I did a tester. I wanted to show you what it looks like. I did a carrot. I had to uh, alter the carrot stem just a little bit to fit my button. I did it on that 32 count Aspen fabric. Maybe I can use this in my finish. I don't know. I'm addicted. I told you guys I'm addicted to making all of the buttons. How cute is that? This is a one and an eighth inch size button, by the way. So that is starting tomorrow. The hashtag is more chocolate bunnies sal. It'll be here on the screen. It'll be down in the description. I would love for you to join us. Join my Facebook group. A lot of information is shown there. I have a breakdown of what we're stitching each week. I did post it on my YouTube community page, but there's a lot go that goes on in the Facebook group. Um, it's just kind of a great hub. Plus it's a for all the information. Plus everyone stitching can share their progress. Uh, if you have been part of my sales before, I, I started this Facebook group because I had been asked to do some sales or host some sales, I should say. And we wanted a place where we could chat and share our work because that's the fun is seeing each other's work, seeing each other's fabric choices. And I was saying earlier, someone in the group showed her floss toss for this pattern and she's going to stitch hers on a pale pink fabric because her de decorations are more pastel for Easter. It looks beautiful. Her She shared a picture of her floss toss and everything. Don't be afraid to totally switch it up to whatever... Um, whatever you like or what works for your decor. I'm excited to see the progress for that. Um, there's been a lot. I know I'm stitching on 32 count. You can stitch on 14 or 28. There has been a lot of great photos and floss tosses of fabrics that um, y'all are going to stitch on 14 count Ada. I know Toast, oh, I think it's called Toast, is a great color that I've seen a lot of you post about. Um, and it's going to be fantastic. The finishing board that Chantal is doing for us for this, uh, she doesn't have it quite finalized yet, but it, the, I'll have that information soon. It is sized for 14 to 14 slash 28, because whatever you stitch on there, it, it will be the same size. Uh, it will work for that, meaning it's going to work for anyone doing a 16 or 32 as well. I want, I was very, um, I wanted to make sure that the finishing piece would work for either one. Uh, so that, cause I think those are probably the two we're using, I'm using the called for size, which is a 32 fabric or a 16. Um, but I know a lot of you feel more comfortable with 14 or 28. So that was kind of one of my criteria and you can always add a little wider border for your backing or whatever. And of course I will have a finishing tutorial at the end. We will do a stitch with me the next four Mondays at 7.30 p.m. Central. And it's just a great place to come and visit on the first stitch with me. I will not start mine ahead of time. I'm going to start with you guys. I can't promise I'll start each week exactly uh, like the stitch along dictates. It just kind of depends on where I'm at. But week one, I am going to start at the very beginning. I'm going to show you how to measure your fabric. Uh, use the, I'm going to do a screen share of the cross stitch calculator, show you how to figure out the, the finish size of your piece, how big to cut your fabric, where to start, and then we'll stitch. So uh, come join me. Even if you've stitched it already, if you want to come and stitch along and chat, or if you're not a stitcher, I know I got some that just like to come chat, come chat with us. It's just a fun laid back atmosphere and where we get to, to stitch and, and chat together. So that's tomorrow. I have a link for that down in the description as well. Okay. I think I got all of that. Um, free charts. I feel like this might just need to be something I need to add to each episode or each floss tube now because there seems to always be so many lately. Uh, first up, Erica Michaels shared this, so I shared it in my Facebook group. She has a hugs and kisses chart. So definitely check out her Facebook and print this one out. I'm going to put this in my needs to be stitched next year pile. I have a whole bunch. And then I had someone in my um, face, my Facebook group posted that they had stitched these cute Easter charts. And 
they said they were free and I always like to go double check. <laughs> um, and to be fair, she didn't post a link or anything like that. So I went and searched it out. I went and looked and then I shared the link because there have been a lot of fantastic Valentines, but I haven't seen a whole lot of like spring yet. I'm sure there's some coming, but this is uh, whilst Iris naps spring freebies and look at those carrots and bunnies. I mean, how cute are those, you guys? So uh, I have a link for that down in the description below as well. Absolutely darling little Easter charts. If you're looking, if you are all in for that, the springtime style and you're looking for more, cute. Okay, so those are my freebies to share this week. I'm sure there's so many more. I just pick some that I see. Um, next stitchy retreat. So Chantal did a uh, on location live in her floss tube on Friday afternoon. I will link it down in the description below. The 141 retreat will be September 8th, 9th and 10th in her hometown and Kathy of Hands on Design is the guest designer. I am going. I cannot wait. So um it her venue is pretty big. It should hold quite a few people. I'm very excited. As of now, this is the only retreat I'm going, only cross-stitch retreat I'm going to this year. I should preface, preface that. Um, I've never been to one, so I'm going to be a complete fish out of water. If I have a glazed look on my face, don't judge me too hard. <laughs> um, but I'm very excited. Uh, I did go and I ordered... A, ba a custom bag. When Jessica posted that they were, that there was an opening for, uh, oh gosh, why can I not think of the name? Well, this is a great story and I don't want to look it up right now. I'll tell you next week. And I haven't got it yet, but I paid for it. Um, I'm getting a custom retreat bag. So thank you for enabling yet again, Jessica. <laughs> And Chantal, they both have them. And I didn't want to be left out, you know, FOMO. So uh, anyhow, I'm excited. Let's just leave it at that. Registration is not open yet. Chantal talks about all of it in her video. Please check out her video. She has lots of good information there. She will let you know in plenty of time before registration opens. Um, I'm sure she'll post it all over social her Instagram, her Facebook. She'll talk about it in her weekly YouTube videos and all of that. Definitely follow her for that information. Um, yeah. And I think she said she's hoping by the end of this month, but doesn't have a set date. Just follow her for, uh, so you know when the registration opens for the 141 retreat. Okay. Let's do, well, this is on top, so I'm going to go out of order. I have a couple things for Stitchy Mail. I got this card from Tabitha. I wanted to, sh it's a cute Valentine's card. I wanted to show how it, it closes because it has a cute closure. Look at that. How cute is that? And then this pulls. Isn't that adorable? Tabitha, thank you so much. And then Connie sent me a beautiful card and she said she saw this at Hobby Lobby and thought of me. So I have a fabric addict one up here from Joyous in Christ and I'm going to add this one from Connie right next to it because both of those are so true. Thank you, thank you, I love it so much. That was a fun surprise. And it's funny. It seems like sometimes when I get, because when I got the other, uh, the fabric addict one, Ethan went with me to the post office that day too. I had a whole bunch of heavy boxes. So 17 year old boy, that's a good job for him. Um, but he was like, what are you getting at the post? What, are, what are you getting? Cause he thinks like cards from y'all come. And so he was like, what is that? Anyway, it was pretty cute. He likes seeing what you guys send. Okay, haul this week. Not a lot. Well, not a lot that I purchased. Fat Quarter Shop sent me a great little bundle. I'll show you that in a minute. 
Um, I actually have a gray book stand already, but I saw that they have this aqua one and you guys might not know this, but I love me some aqua. And so I bought this one. I use it. You can put your patterns here. You can use it for cookbook stand or whatever book stand, but it's fantastic. Your needle minders. I don't use needle minders really from fabric, but I do love them. We'll stick right to here. I actually use mine and I will show you in the stitch with me tomorrow night. I actually stick mine into my little lap desk because it has a slot in it just like this and put my pattern in here and it works fantastic. I have a gray one, but I went ahead and picked up this one too. Amazon comes in all the colors of the rainbow except for orange, which is a real problem. I needed one for a gift. So do I spray paint one myself or do I just do something else? Yeah, let me know about that. I don't understand how it can come like in every color. And they also have like a mint, aqua, blue, navy. And I'm like, okay, we got lots of, lots of blues. Can we have another color? But I love these, highly recommend. I think it's about 10 bucks from Amazon. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Make great little gifts for stitchy friends too. And I know I've seen a lot of people post about those. I've had my gray one for a really long time, but I think, was it the Primrose Cottage Girls talking about getting pink ones? It made me think about going and checking that out because I hadn't added it to my Amazon shop. And I saw that they had that aqua one and I was like, oh, I need the aqua because that's how my mind works. I will talk about... The fabric I got, I ordered this from Lindy Stitches and you get a cute little postcard and it actually has a little chart, a little freebie chart on the back to stitch this, which I thought was a really cute packaging. I saw these colors and I just thought, you know, I want some fun color fabric. So uh, this is um, Sea Spray by Seraphim and this is Water Spirit by Seraphim. Springy, very, very springy. That this is the fabric that I stitched my little rainbow on, and it's beautiful. I love it. So I'm excited to try both these out. Um, beautiful 36 count linen. I just ordered a couple of 40 counts from her. Um, so one is in a blush pink color. I'm very excited about those. So that is that's mostly my haul. I want to thank Fat Quarter Shop for sending all of the next things I'm going to show you. Thank you, thank you. Some will be giveaways today and some will be giveaways in the future. So let's go ahead and show you what they sent. This is the new pink Be Mine Needle Minder, Lori Holt Needle Minder. You saw me put it on that metal stand. I am. She has a yellow one already. Now there's a pink one, so cute. Also new from Lori Holt in the Fat Quarter Shop shop is this Prim Village little charm. So cute on bags and things. It's this little aqua house. Isn't it cute? Really adorable. I love this. This is the Lori Holt Thread Bling. So you can put your floss drops right on here, but it has this little red gingham heart bling. I love red hearts. Um, I love this. Really, really cute. Uh, they sent a Lady Claws. This was in that Stitch Quarterly, and actually I gave away a Stitch Quarterly with all the things. But here is the pattern only. Thank you, Fat Quarter Shop. They sent a new quilt pattern. This is Luminaries. This is a beautiful pattern. And do it in any color. You don't have to do it just like what they did. I think this would be beautiful in so many different colors. I could see this like a, a patriotic quilt very easily. So cute. They sent Cornelius. He's part of their chicken club. He was the first chicken in their chicken club. So it's the pattern. January stackables. 
I feel like I've given a lot of these away. <laughs> um, so pretty. A very, very fun chart. This was just came out from them. This is part of their Simply Signs series they're doing this year at Fat Quarter Shop. This is Be Mine. Thank you, Fat Quarter Shop. And this is the Sweetheart Ornaments book. They did a Christmas ornament book. They fit in these little tart tins. Um, I think they're doing them for every series. I thought that, I think the garland, ha hanging the tart tins around the garland is absolutely adorable. So check out uh, Fat Quarter Shop for these. Okay, you guys, I am going to move on to giveaways and do my giveaways and we'll be done. Uh, last week, I have one winner who has not claimed uh, the in the air. So you have one more week to claim before I redraw. Glenna Reynolds. Uh, if that is you, you have won this. Please email me at the email in the description and I'll get that out to you. Okay. Quick, quick. Because I got guests coming over. <laughs> uh, number one from last week was the Fat Quarter Shop Cupid's Box. Thank you to Fat Quarter Shop for uh, giving me this or to donate donating this for a giveaway. Can't get it out. That goes to Tracy Luckadoo. Tracy, if this is your comment, please email me at the email in the description and I will get your prize out to you. Big Hearted Tiny Town. It is the pattern. It does come with the little buttons to finish it. You just saw my finish. This goes to Janet Portillo. Janet, if that is your comment, please email me and I will get your pattern out to you. Number three, United We Stand from Primrose Cottage. And I should say all the rest of these patterns were donated by viewers, so thank you so much. This goes to Dawn Hermes. Dawn, please email me. Next up, Established 1776. I've stitched all these, by the way. All of these patterns I'm given, I love that. Uh, this is goes to Kimberly Miller. Kimberly, please email me. And Land That I Love. Betty Racine. Thank you to everyone. Congratulations. Email me at the email in the description and I will get everything in the mail. In fact, anything from last week that I had you contacted me has gone out. Everything has gone out. It feels so good. Okay, this week. Oh, and I should, I forgot to tell you. Thank you guys for answering last week's question. To hoop or not to hoop. I loved reading everybody's responses. Would you believe? I did not think of a question, so I've, I've got one. I, I just now came up with one. Um, this week, I have... I'm going to do three giveaways this week. So, please be a U.S. resident. Please be over 18. I need to ask for your address. Um, leave the numbers of the items you're interested in below. Don't write all. Don't write giveaway. Um... Please be a subscriber and like the video. And with that, let's go ahead. Number one is Fat Quarter Shop Be Mine, donated by the Fat Quarter Shop. Thank you. Thank you, Fat Quarter Shop. If you are interested in this, put a one down in the comments. Number two is the January Stackables. If you would like the January Stackables, put the number two. And... Number three this week is the Fat Quarter Shop Chicken Club Cornelius. Put a number three. Okay, you guys, answer me this question. Where do you like to shop? I think I've seen this in other people's videos, but because I can't come up with anything else off, off the top of my head, do you have a local shop? Do you shop online? Do you shop at Fat Quarter Shop, 123 Stitch? Do you have a local shop? Mention them down below. And if you don't mind, put what city it's in in case other people are reading through the comments and they don't know that there is a shop. Someone did message me and said that there's a site that will tell you where local needlework shops are, but I did not write it down. So I will share that next week when I 
get to it. I just happened to see it this morning and I didn't have time to add it to my list. So um, let me know, where do you spend your money? Where do you like to get your stitching supplies? I would say that I shop mostly at Fat Quarter Shop and now um, Heart's Desire here in Wichita, Kansas, um, which thank you guys for supporting them. This is kind of off, not completely off topic, but thank you. They mentioned that they have had a lot of you guys contact them, have them kit up projects and mail them out to, um, to them. And they are just overwhelmed and great. So grateful, um, for all of you. So thank you guys, um, because they're a lovely shop. I really, really love, uh, shopping there and, Thank you for supporting them. Okay, everyone, have a fantastic weekend. Go Chiefs. Uh, and I will see you guys all next week. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.